at the risk of sounding like your father or scold or your boss or whatever, watch the whole video. A lot of the things that I know, I'm sorry, a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about are things that I've shown in other videos. There are a couple of new things that I am going to show. A lot of times I intermingle things in the middle and at the end of the video and people miss it because they bounce out a little too early. Just one of those things that happens when you're making a 10 minute, 15 minute long video. So I recommend you watch all the way to the end because the very last thing I'm going to show is super important and I really do not see many people using it or even knowing that it is there. Now with that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. That really helps me out a lot. It keeps me motivated to make more of this kind of content as well as leave a comment. And as of late, I've been getting a lot of very thoughtful comments from people all around the world telling me about their backgrounds, things that they've done. And it sparks interesting conversation. And a lot of times I get some ideas from those convos to make more content with. So for all that, I really appreciate everyone. Thank you. Now on screen, what I have is my adjuster base. Again, I use this in my modeling course at my training site and the reason why is, is because it allows me to cover so many subjects when you get into we'll say slightly intermediate maybe more advanced content you'll note that I start renaming my features renaming a feature is a very important concept and the reason is is because in this case use or use case whatever you want to say I'm going to pick these four items. Now, I'm going to guess most of you have seen this, maybe you don't remember it, is if I pick several items at once and hit the Enter key on the keyboard, it brings up this list of expressions. And having those names, knowing what those features are, is useful for this expressions list. So, for the width of the block, I want this to be 135. The length of the block, I'll say, is 110. The block height, I'm going to say is 8, and then my wall height will say is 40. All right, once I have all those in, I select OK, and just like that, all of those parameters have been modified. Here's my width, that's my length, block height, and wall height. So that Enter on the keyboard is very useful because it allows me to make those modifications to a bunch of things. Now, if I come over and I try, let's say, picking the sketch and this extrude and this sketch and I hit enter on the keyboard, what happened was is it took me into the last sketch. Reason is, is because none of the sketches have any parameters there to modify. There's nothing there that it knows to use or do. So if that's the case, it'll just take you into the last feature you've selected. Let me hit finish. Now, if I come in here, I pick my extrude and I'll pick a couple of these on top of it and hit enter. Notice when I go in there, my extrude limit is set to zero because when I did the extrusion I sent it up to that plane so it goes to zero if I try adding or modifying anything extra I get this weird mapping thing doesn't know what to do okay I can begin mapping if I really want All right go to lines hit OK and what happened I got that mapping. Why? Well, that zero was because that extrusion limit was the bottom limit, not the top. Typically, when we make an extrusion, what do we do? We extrude it up to something and we forget about the bottom limit. So, what ended up happening in this case is that bottom limit went up past the top limit because the top limit is block height which is set to 8, so this is too thick. The bottom came up and switched over, and look where all the fillets went. Everything switched out. So a lot of times when I am making an extrusion, so I don't get those kinds of errors, what I will do is I will say at the 0 until selected, what's my selected? We turn on that. This plane 
So there are no variables there for me to change. So if I were to do the same thing over again, notice I don't even get that zero in there. So there's a reason why I do a lot of the things that I do. If there are parameters that I want fixed, like the height, even the zero parameter, I still go to a plane. So I don't come into something like this and accidentally create something that I don't want or modify something I don't want. And if there are no parameters on the thing that can be modified with this tool, it doesn't list them. And as you saw with the sketch, it went into the sketch because there were no parameters there to be had. So it inferred that I went into that sketch. Now, that Again, it's just simply enter. When you pick multiple things, hit enter, it brings up that list. So having names, understanding what you're editing is very important. So with that, you may, like I said, see me do things like the zero plane is up to the plane that it sets on to remove that variable. And sometimes that's really important. People don't think of that. And I know why, because it's never going to move. Why would I do that? But there's an opportunity for that to occur. So we reduce that opportunity by going up to the plane that the sketch sets on. It's just what I do. I don't always do it. I get lazy because, you know, I'm a designer like anyone else. But it's just something for you to think about, as well as that enter tool, which is super useful. Another very useful tool is when I pick on something, and I know I've talked about this in other videos as well, but typically I get towards the middle of the video and people drop out, so you miss it, and you don't see the super cool tool that was added in several versions ago. A friend of mine who works at Siemens, him and I were having a chat. He scripted something out. It worked great. I tested it. He sent it into their development team, and they integrated it into the tool. So thank you, you know who you are, you're brilliant. If I pick the feature that I wanna modify and come down to the details window, this is where this is at. You have to be in the details window. I'm gonna right mouse click and there's this little tool called step expression. Step expression allows me to modify that expression in various ways. How do I use this? Well. If I have a surface or something relatively complex that I need to make modifications to, but I wanna see what the modifications are doing, it was very difficult to do that because I would have to type in the number, hit enter, wait for the update, and then look and go back and forth. What I like to do is I like to have a dynamic set of tools so I can do the update without having to worry about the tool itself and just pay close attention to the model as it's updating on screen. So what I'll do is, again, this is typically a, on a surface. I've done this with car body panels, aerospace parts, you know, plane lofts, all sorts of stuff because it works great. And I have to grow something, so maybe I'll set it to a millimeter. And then, you know, here's the original value. And what I'll do is I'll, I'm literally staring at my screen like this, watching the part update to see what's going on. And I know there's times when you're doing an update and you're walking that update up because it's failed and you want to see what's going on and know where it fails. So this tool is great for interrogating the model as well. So you can really see what's going on and have an understanding of what's happening. And that, again, the nice thing about this tool is if you look over here, it lists the original value. It lists the current value. I also have a slider. I can slide this to shrink and uh, grow the part, or in this case, move the datum. So this step expression is super useful. To be very frank, I do use this more than I do editing multiple expressions. Although editing multiple expressions is useful in some cases, I do forget that it does exist. There's just so much to worry about, so much to do. Sometimes I do slip up and forget it. Yes, me, it's just being a part of human. But this one, when it was introduced, is gold, absolutely gold. Because like I said, I can't tell you how many times I just wanted to see the model update and have a good understanding of what's going on with a model as it grows or shrinks and expands and contracts and does those things. 
again, it's great for interrogating to see where something falls over and have an understanding of why it's going to fall over. So, step expression. And again, the way to get to it is you pick the feature that you want to modify. You come down to details, you right mouse click, and step expression. Now, pay attention to the rest of these. You know, either there's edit, edit and expression editor and rename. All of those others are, have been in there. This one's the new one, step expression. All right. Up, up, up. And let me increase that step size. And just like that, you can watch that model morph without, again, having to worry about entering in a value, hitting OK, it updating, and then going back and forth, et cetera, et cetera. It just, it's super useful. And thank you to everybody that was involved with this tool. I cannot thank you enough. It's brilliant. Now, one other very useful tip in the tree is with your user expressions. So here's a user expression, and I know I have it used. I know I have it attached to various datums, but I don't know what those datums are, okay? Or what features it's attached to. And I use this as an interrogation, especially if I get someone else's file, because you know a lot of places they want you to drive everything by user expression. And if I have to change that user expression, I want to know all of the things that are going to change along with it. So if I right mouse click on here and go down to what you see here as browse, I get that browser window and now I know what it's being used for. And then what this allows me to do is go, all right, well, I want to turn on that datum. Oh, there it is. I can right mouse click on it. And I can go into the edit parameters. I can go into suppress. I can hide show. I can isolate to the tree. I can delete it, pull information. Okay, make current feature. So there's several things that I can do with that item and notice there it highlights in the tree and then you know I don't unfortunately have the ability to fit here so I really can't do that but I can pick it and then do that fit I know it's right there right but it allows me to navigate the part and then I can come back up right mouse click and browse Turn on the rest of these. And let me do a fit. So now I can see that datum, that datum, right over here, and that datum, whether or not I need those. And if I find something that I want to remove that link to, once again, I can come over here. Now, if I right mouse click on the expression and go to edit, this will edit the expression for this specific datum plane. I can come in here, make constant, right mouse click, go to edit, and then now I'll say 30. When I close this, that plane has been updated. Okay, this one, nope. Oh, I'm sorry, yep, that's the one that I modified. It's different. Now, when I come up here, right mouse click, and I go to browse, you'll notice that plane is no longer inside of that browse. So interrogating the model with that browse tool is super useful so you understand what's linked and where. It's absolutely critical in some instances to know how a model's gonna update. There may be something that is changing that you're unaware of because you may have tied it to an expression or someone did and you wanna know what's going on. So that browse is useful as can be. And on a final note, if I click on it and I try to go, because I bring out my browser tool right over here, and if I try to use the browser tool on that, you'll notice, okay, let me go to settings. 
show expressions is turned on browse right isolate center on select animate legend you know these are the bodies and all the other stuff and if I try picking this you notice it doesn't really do anything now if I pick a datum it shows me but for some reason it won't do it here on my expression you have to go in and right mouse click on it and you have to go to browse here in order to get that all right super useful it is a wonderful wonderful tool and I think of all the things that I've shown that is probably going to be in some way the most useful for some people to understand what's going on in the model next is the step expression like I said I'm very grateful that it's there now as an added bonus what I do want to talk just a little bit more about is with some of these tools if I go into my tools function and I turn on the delay model update what you see happening so if I right mouse click on this I'm sorry not right up here but I'm talking about the the details expression I screwed up notice the step expression is turned off so for those of you that use your delay model update which you should you should understand how that works it's a super powerful tool if you do use it and you go to find that step expression and it's turned on step expressions not there it will not allow you to update the model with delay model update on so step expression cannot be there and active now there are methods in which you could use to do a delay model update but that's an advanced topic and here's a shameless plug it'll be in one of my advanced courses for design so if you want to see it you're gonna to have to take it there anyway hope you learned something uh, apologize for the shameless plugs and uh, again leave me a comment I really like those I've been enjoying them a lot lately so thanks again